In this video, I'm going to be getting all the achievements in Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi Rush is a rhythmical, Devil May Cry-like platformer which, if you know anything about DMC-like achievements, they're usually... difficult. I'll leave it at that for the intro, because we have a lot to jump into. So let's get started. Stage 1, The Story. Before starting the game up, I decided on choosing hard difficulty. That way I could at least get used to the gameplay before experiencing suffering. The game starts with us meeting our slightly out of the ordinary, music obsessed protagonist, Chai. Yep. Looking to get his special Vandalay robot attachment. After Kale deems us a loser and tosses our iPod Nano, of course it leads us to becoming a defective robot granting us our absolute, unstoppable robot fighting powers. Because of the Vandalay policy of no defects, it doesn't take long for the entire corporation to want to dispose of us. So the game quickly teaches us how to defend ourselves while following the beat, and I post some worrying results. I moved on and the game quickly taught me about smidge bot tips which I'll need to find all of for an achievement and the gear currency in which I'll need millions of. After defeating a few more enemies, I meet a new face, and we synchronize with 808. 808 unlocks the bead hit, which grants us access to heavier hitting attack finishers and special attacks in the future. I continue along the first track until I find my first Vandalay Vlog, another collectible I'll need to find all 77 of. Yup, and let's keep in mind that's one of the many collectibles in this game. After blasting through this 2D and this cool laser section, we run into electrical circuits and gain the power to store energy so we can use very useful special attacks. By the way, I need to open every one of these chess bots as well. After restoring the power to this generator, BOOM! I move forward through the level to find my very first big bad tough enemy who wasn't so tough. Oh, you down already, huh? And I finally got the taste of my first S rank. We then destroy this poor worker slave robot's hard work and head into the first boss arena. The beat starts and so did this fight start with this absolute cretin. I like defense. That's good. I like how they taste. Oh, that's bad. The idea with him was simple, wait for him to keep his hand on the ground and smack it, rinse and repeat until I hit the second phase. All the guy really added to his moves was some easy to dodge missiles so I quickly dropped him to his third phase. Oh, serious mode! During this phase I was granted my first achievement, feeling the beat for landing 20 beat hits on an enemy, and after dropping his health to its last quarter another achievement popped. Does that say weak point? Which reveals that his head is his weak spot. After a bit of trial and error, I brought my first boss down. Woo! But every song's gotta end. Damn. Achievement unlocked. Start with a bang. We then meet the woman behind the voice, Peppermint. She'll become our useful guide slash hacker on her journey. And this is the hideout, the area where we can relax for a second or two to get an upgrade, chat, or look at this incredibly long list of things I need to do to finished the Hall of Fame. I mean, just look at it. This is for one achievement. Before moving on to the next level, I exhausted all the dialogue, including playing with 808, which gave me another achievement. I began track two, where I had to head to Rekka's office. The new plan was simple, to retrieve all six of the passwords to Spectra to stop the secret operation. While navigating through the level, Peppermint unlocked the magnet grapple in my arm, so I can hook onto out of reach magnets, and also enemies, which really comes in handy for extending combos and chasing enemies. Shortly after, I was carefully searching the area for any secrets, and I found another collectible. My first graffiti, 23 more to go. And not even 5 minutes later, I found a Kale statue. Another collectible set I need to bust open for the Wall of Fame. Oh, achievement unlocked! Who put gears in there? I then unlocked a new funny special attack where I ride my guitar into battle. Another achievement pops. I play my own way. I very much so enjoy these parts of the game, even though they're usually short, but nonetheless they did a great job integrating oh, well, these rail slide oh. parts into the actual levels. Oh. I eventually encounter a barrier blocking my path, and unlock the assist function where I can call in any of my friends to help me with the level progression and combat. Another requirement for the Hall of Fame is to help out three different robots in their individual side missions. This is the first one where I had to shoot all three sets of pigeons for his content. Oh, there they are. And lastly, right before Rekka's office, we encounter our first HR investigator, whom we also have to find all in every track as well. <laughs> yeah, let's go! The first phase of Rekka is a complete breeze. To dodge her punches and dashes and eventually I was at the second phase. Phase 2 has her filled with electricity so I just didn't touch her when she was juiced up and I hit her when she was back to normal. Oh what? This is sick! After dodging the pipes, she gains a new set of moves where she goes crazy with her newfound weapon. I picked myself back up and brought myself to phase 4. Phase where she brings all her moves together. <gasps> 
I quickly took my knowledge of her movesets from her previous phases and swiftly turned her into Swiss cheese and garnered another boss achievement, Cream of the Crop. After Peppermint finished hacking into the Vandalay systems using Rekka's key, we found out the worst of news. The new software update for everybody wearing a piece of Vandalay tech was going to be mind controlled soon. Luckily we are granted the ability to use chips, the most important form of passive upgrades in the game. You can use chips to further your damage, earn more gears, and even make it easier to hold your combo multiplier. Oh, almost forgot. We also gained an achievement just for unlocking them as well. On to the next track. Oh, level, level. This level introduces a few of the most annoying enemies to fight in the whole game. And while they might not upset me right now, in the future they'll become a huge pain in my side. Eventually I ended up finding my first Armstrong circuit, which you can use these to upgrade your chips. Oh also you need to find another 52 of them hidden in each level for another wall of fame challenge. And while fighting some of these cretinous robots, I gained another achievement for using Peppermint's assist to break 10 shields in combat. After heading into the R&D department, we head inside to the AR department, where we meet Zonzo and pick up a useful technique, parrying. Zonzo's a very helpful man as he kept me in place until I became semi-competent at it. And while parrying this brutal bot to death, we gain two new achievements. Perfect parrying for perfect parrying 10 times, and alright, that felt awesome. And no joke, five minutes later, another one popped for collecting a full health gauge. So this was our pesky test subject. Was that a JoJo pose? Uh oh, yep, yeah, yeah, this guy loves the JoJo stuff. Suddenly Zonzo introduces another new enemy, one that's actually going to forcibly end track 3. This is where I meet another two allies, Macaroon and Cinnamon. Also, Macaroon is very strong. Oh. We quickly jump back into the action with track 4 and immediately try out Macaroon's power, which is just straight up brute strength. I swiftly made it back to the robot for round 2 and Macaroon busted open its armor plating allowing me to actually damage it this time. Right after, we start to brute force our way through Zonzo's many AR challenges and swiftly start burning his budget and during some more fights we ended up getting They Were Broken When I Got Here for destroying 200 robots. After Zonzo destroys my gift basket, he spawns in a volcano rave and I decide to parry one for an achievement. Finally finishing off Zonzo's remaining budget, we meet him in person and immediately finish him off for another achievement. <laughs> this level isn't over yet, as Kale enters the room and tries to stop us, so we attempt to escape and Chai sacrifices himself. They knock me out and Chai dreams that he totally won, which couldn't be further from the truth, and we begin track 5 by busting our way out of our cell. Turns out track 5 was the chore level, where we had to fix the security in order to restore power to an elevator in order to progress. This level seemed to be brimming with collectibles though, as I was finding multiple Kale statues, dozens of Vandalay vlogs, and even a few circuit pieces as well. After a long time of collecting, fighting, and pathing, we knock the three nodes into place and restore the power. Other than the introductory of two new enemies, there really wasn't much else to say about this level. Though I did get two new achievements, Kissing the Sky for performing 50 aerial raves and Z Shieldings got nothing on us for shattering 10 enemy shields using Macaroon. So we moved on to track 6, which is by far the shortest level and it immediately becomes a full on assault with non-stop enemies. Once I fought my way through them, Corsica, the head of security, tries to put the brakes on the tram full stop. Now we are fighting hordes of enemies, we are now timed on breaking the brakes. It was actually easier than it sounds. And with that, the level already ended, so on to track 7. Track 7 was surprisingly a stealth level, uh, just, just kidding. After crushing those enemies, we headed towards Corsica's office, which was a lot further than anticipated. So we headed up, and up we headed. We did the enemy crushing, slamming, and cramming. Got me some collectibles, and we finally make it about halfway where she ramps up the difficulty. Same process though, go up, get collectibles, kill enemies but dodge lasers this time. Finally we made it to the top and we encountered Corsica. Only thing is, her boss fight's a little bit different. She has a pure rhythm fight. I did it, oh my gosh. I was proud of myself even though it was the first warm up attack and it didn't take long for me to start missing everything. But eventually we defeated her and managed to convince her to join our side giving us another helper and another achievement. Since we now have half the needed passwords, we only have three more bosses to defeat. Track 8 saw us going after Mimosa. Right off the bat I found another robot that needed more assistance as he managed to lose his winning golden can and smacking a couple trash cans revealed it pretty fast. Just one more bot to help and we can cross that one off the wall of fame list. 
After this, we move on with the level, where another painful enemy reveals itself. He's very tanky, and every time he lands a hit, he lights you on fire, taking away your combo multiplier. Oh, and during my fight with him, I gained You Must Like Calling Me In Chai for calling in Peppermint's assist 50 times. We then move into the museum and discover a plethora of Vandalay vlogs for the collection. Luckily, they aren't as hidden as expected, and after collecting a couple, I gained the achievement for reading half of them. I completely forgot to mention that I've been destroying every soda machine in sight as we need to break all 15 as well. After blasting through another multitude of enemies, we get to finally try Corsica's ability, which after doing a couple Dead by Daylight skill checks, opens up hidden platforms which will be useful for backtracking and finding collectibles we missed. Also, same idea as the generators, she can blow away the flame doors that I spotted in previous levels too. During this fight with a room full of enemies, I managed to get perfect parrier, parrying perfectly 200 times. And with that out of the way, the level was complete, and we moved on to track 9, which was just my favorite boss fight with the Mimosa. What can I say about Mimosa? She... flies? So I smacked her down to the ground and did as much damage as I could, which I just repeated until she was on phase 2. I swear she just turned off the lights for phase 2. It was... kind of easy. She was even nice enough to turn the lights back on just before phase 3, which had an epic guitar hero battle that we completely crushed her in, and after this part, she didn't stand a chance. Thanks for the achievement passcode, Mimosa. We quickly make our escape into track 10, where we went after the money man, Rogue Fur, and luckily it starts off exciting by shooting ourselves out of a cannon. Of course, we land in a cafeteria littered with enemies. I mean, why wouldn't we, right? After making quick work of these enemies, we encounter... Chef! Whoa! And after a close battle, I take him out. After Rogue first shuts everything down, he basically amped up the enemies. So this was a really big enemy fighting level. Actually, every enemy in the game took place in the combat, in fact. And while progressing through the level, I get pretty overzealous looking for collectibles, even though they're not usually that hidden. After blowing off Statue Kale's head, <laughs> We basically finish the level and head into Roguefur's office, and luckily, he lets us in. Porsica mentions that Roguefur had a bad rap, saying that he was something of a wolf in sheep's clothes. Uh, oh, that's that's what she meant. Roguefur was easily the hardest boss up until this point, as a lot of the time it felt like he threw out random attacks, but looking back on him now, he did have a lot of notifiers that signaled that I was about to be attacked. He also had this really annoying phase after every initial wolf phase where he would run around like a chicken with his head cut off and you would just have to chase him around the stage until the next phase. He then takes us into the dubstep room where we have to deal with more of the same but with this added nonsense attack. After another close fight, he goes back into chicken mode, but this time he adds a neat laser beam section. We of course whoop him again in no time at all, and we end up fighting in the Scrooge McDuck money pit, which was really cool. Even though he has some epic dialogue and this cool money dive attack. We had one more showdown which I of course came out triumphant in and we took him out for another achievement. Also, it didn't pop until I was back in my hideout for some reason, but I got out in a puff of smoke for putting out 10 fires with Corsica's ability. Two more tracks to go and one more big boss left. Immediately starting track 11, we get trapped in an energy cage by Kale. But of course, it took me no time at all to bust out with the power of friendship. Track 11 was really short, only a few fights and no collectibles. It was a relaxing change of pace. Kale did attempt to cut the fun short with his mega robot, but with no problems at all, me and the boys strike him down just like the rest of them. This actually granted me another achievement. Yay! Final fight on track 12 begins right off the bat, and Kale manages to mind control Chai, so the first phase, no joke, went to the cat. What? I'm controlling a cat? Two cat slaps and it was short lived. Imagine losing to a cat, come on. But we gained control over Chai again and the real fight began. Kale was the toughest fight by far, with unpredictable attacks and a ton of armor, but luckily the first phase wasn't that bad as I brute forced through it all. Phase 2 turns Kale into Doc Ock from Spider Man, and luckily, once again, after figuring out that each arm can be instantly broken using your helpers, this phase also ended up being easy. Now, Phase 3 was the phase that tore me apart. Oh! Kale uses a mixture of all of his attacks from Phase 1, but they are seriously amplified versions of them, making them way harder to dodge and predict. I was just lucky that when you die, you restart in the same phase. After around 3 deaths, I took him out. Yes! Oh my god! Only to find out there was a rhythm part right after that I was just the worst at and of course no! I Why? messed up 10 oh. times over and had Dang. to restart. It only took two more painful deaths afterwards to finally beat him with decent health so I wouldn't have to worry about the rhythm part again. Yes! Get destroyed! Finally!
finally. Oh my goodness. And with that, marked the end of Kale, and the game was finished. But it was far from finished, of course. I gained, I think I deserve some praise for beating the game on hard difficulty, and who's the boss now for defeating Kale? Stage 2, post game plus cleanup. Before jumping into the post game challenge doors that I unlocked, I decided to start collecting small miscellaneous achievements like I look cool for switching cosmetics, want to hear my playlist for buying a song from the jukebox, and check out my moves for purchasing every combo and partner attack. And with those new combo moves, I tried every single one of them in the training room for another achievement. Another achievement I missed out on was I am a good person for helping three robots in need and the last guy was for this guy. He need me to find him his 10 comic book Amazon deliveries scattered around track 5. I jumped right back into each individual track looking for each and every challenge room located in a random Found spot in each it. level. Challenge room number one. And I attempted to S rank all of them for the Wall of Fame checklist. Some of them were first try material, some of them were confusing enough to take multiple tries, but eventually we crushed each and every one of them, unlocking the harder versions of the challenges. Now we have another eight rooms, I think? Before I jumped into the hard versions, I deemed it necessary to unlock the rest of the chip upgrade slots, which gave me chip tuned. I started up the challenges and immediately ran into the hardest one yet. Don't touch the floor! Oh, so they're just harder versions of the previous challenge. This challenge was really hard, as I couldn't be on the ground for more than three seconds, but I also had to take out oh, grounded shoot, enemies. More. <gasps> No, There's ground enemies! I tried it multiple times until I discovered a strategy using my assists while I stay in the air. And even then, it was still really difficult. But after many more attempts, I persevered with an S-Rank. Yes! Got it! Let's go! After this challenge though, I was unstoppable, S-Ranking each and every other challenge with within one or two tries. Once we finished, the big door opened, revealing what was inside. I prepared my body for another nasty boss fight with Kale... Never mind. That's two more achievements for the challenge rooms being completed. Stage 3, the collectibles. As I explained earlier, there's a lot of things to collect in this game, from statues, circuits, all the way to iPads and graffiti. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of some of the things I managed to complete early on. I smashed all the kill statues, busted all the soda machines, found the remaining life gauges and reverb gauges, and even managed to find every HR investigator scouring through each level. Now you would think by now I would have found most of the collectibles, but nope. To start, I need to shoot down each and every one of these hovering drones, in which there is around 2-3 to three per level up until track 10, which is where I shot down my last one for an achievement. Got it! There we go! Another achievement had me interacting with every single smidge tip bot, which I was surprised to find that the last one that I was missing was on the first level. The graffiti was definitely the most hidden out of all the collectibles, being that they are stuck to walls or floors, they are easily missable. After collecting them all, the artist appears in the hideout and paints your very own graffiti, giving you an achievement. And finally, Finally, after 77 Vandalay iPads, I pinpoint the last one and finish the I have to read all these things achievement. Yes! Oh yes, 77 out of 77. It was here that I had one more item to collect, the Vandalay circuits, in which I only needed one more to find them all, but I was completely lost. I followed every location guide and searched so far, so wide for that last one, only for it to be at the very beginning of one of the tracks just a few meters behind my spawn. Just imagine. Track 6 has one literally right at the start of the level behind you. I'm just gonna check right now. No! 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 Just so you know, I was still looking for that one when I was basically done all the achievements, so my reaction was justified. Stage 4. Hall of Fame Damageless. The Hall of Fame also has requirements to beat every boss besides Rogue Fur in the game without taking damage and a couple parts of levels as well. Using the high risk high return chip is a no brainer here as it increases your damage but also makes you take more damage. I started with QA 1 mil who while being the very first boss surprisingly gave me a few retries with his sudden attacks. Luckily for most of these damageless challenges you can quit out and continue from the beginning of the last phase to save scum your damage. You are busted. Oh my... I get him? Finally. I moved on to Rekka. She had this really weird issue where she stayed invincible for a short period of time before entering the next phase or dying if you kill her too fast, leading to moments like this. Are you... After a handful of attempts, I took her down and moved on. 
Yes! Okay, I got her. Corsica's rhythm battle was up next, and because I was already playing this game a ton at the time, I took her out very precisely and quick without any trouble. Yes, okay, I think I got it. Also, Mimosa was so easy for me that I took her out without damage in one attempt. What? I didn't even have to do anything. She just died on her first knockdown. Now there was Kale, and boy, he was a different story from the rest of them. The rhythm part after phase one was especially frustrating for me, because for some reason, I just couldn't hit the fourth note for the life of me, and when you miss, you have to restart from the cat phase. Oh my... Why? Buckle up, hit it. Hit it now. Yes! I blew through phase two with one-shot knockdowns, and somehow I managed to do the last phase in only two tries. Holy crap! How did I become so good at that? Please tell me I didn't miss. Please tell me... Oh my gosh. Damageless Kale was defeated. For the damageless levels, I had to do this rail section and not take any damage from the shipping containers, which also was an achievement. I need to go back to Trank 8 and not take any electricity damage either, in which the whole stage was filled with it. Oh, thank goodness. Nothing shocks me. And finally, I need to go back to the ending of Trank 4 and during the escape scene, take no damage. That includes all the rail sections, the fighting, and the platforming section. Nice. Damageless. <gasps> oh, you... No fancy footwork, just jump. Joy, get out of there. Whew, okay. Yes! Okay, I think I got it. Stage 5, S ranks. This part alone took 25 to 30 hours of my time at least, as I had to play through not only the entire game 5 times over, but I also need to score S ranks on every stage on every difficulty. It was quite painful, but during my easy through very hard runs, I gained the achievements. That's a lot of junk metal for destroying 500 bots. Okay, well they came after me for another 1,000 destroyed. I think I found your calling, Macaroon, for destroying 50 shields with them. First we parry, then we counter for using 20 parry counters with a partner. I'm not done with you yet for overkilling an enemy 20 times. I saw all those hits coming from a measure away for perfectly parrying every non-boss rhythm attack. Now this is how you fight like a team for 100 parry counters. This is a breeze for putting out 50 fires in battles with Corsica. Or jamming for pulling off 20 jam combos. I hit things with my guitar really well for finishing a stage with S ranks for every chorus. And lastly, I'm untouchable for not taking any damage on any track. That's a lot to take in, I know, trust me. But I hope that goes to show how much time went into the game clearing it four more times. At last, we had one more difficulty, Rhythm Master. Tough of the tough, hardest difficulty in the game. But besides taking a heaping more amount of damage, the only difference in its difficulty is that your comp when your combo meter drops below C, you'll instantly die. There was a ton of moments where this would happen really easily as for some reason there wouldn't be any damageable enemies or even enemies at all at certain points in tracks. During this final playthrough, I evolved into some sort of king of rhythm as besides at a few points, I wasn't struggling at all on bosses or enemies at all and every chorus was being S-ranked over and over. Got her. Wow, that was insanely easy. Another S for the collection. Especially after finding the Chug Jug which restored my health to as a special attack. Eventually it was down to Kale, my previous arch nemesis of difficulty and on very hard difficulty, I was struggling to get a good rank on time as he was very damage spongy with his armor. So I snuck on the high risk high return chip and because I was a different man, I completely low diffed him. I got him, oh my god. Please, please. This is just too much work. No more ball torture. Yes! No more ball torture difficulty. Yes! Oh my The sense of relief of not needing to play the game again washed over me, and I was rewarded with didn't skip a beat for beating it on master difficulty, and now there was only one last thing to clear. 
the Rhythm Tower. 60 floors of non-stop action where both the enemies progressively get more difficult and the BPM gets higher and higher. The Rhythm Tower also has a very disturbing timer which starts ticking down from wave 1 and it only starts with 30 seconds as well. The only way you can counteract this timer is by building it up with your combo beat finishers so I decided to take complete advantage of this extremely short combo finisher. After every 5 floors Corsica will appear to offer you health for time. It seems tempting at first but then I remember about my chug jug and I never have to worry about healing again. Implementing my strategy strategy of abusing that short beat hit attack and spamming the chug jug, I managed to reach floor 22 with 6 whole minutes banked up, which meant things were looking really good for an S rank. After floor 40 we were looking even better with 9.5 minutes saved, but once floor 50 to 60 was reached, the floors jacked up in difficulty. This is way harder. Somehow I managed to have 14 minutes still of time saved up by wave 60. Things were looking amazing for me of course as it really seemed hard to fail at this point. Nice! Oh that was clean! Did I do it? And this is game over! Boom! Yeah! Okay let's see. S rank! Oh my gosh! Yes! That's an achievement! This run cleared the tower achievement, the S rank requirement, and the itemless requirement. But there was one last thing I had to do. I had to clear it one more time. Because I was overconfident, I was actually running low on time during this playthrough. Luckily I noticed that, and I picked up my slack and brought it to 7 more minutes, which was more than enough to take down Kale at this point. BOOM! Let's go. We finally did it. Yes! The game even awarded us with this sweet gold guitar for our efforts. Here we go! After 57.5 hours, it was finally complete. And if you made it this far, I definitely want to thank you for watching and sticking it through. I have a lot more videos planned in the future, so make sure you stick around. I'll see you in the next one.